Hello, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. And you are probably aware that the updated Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game engine 4.0 has just dropped. Which is exciting because it's going to improve stuff. It's going to make things different. But hold your horses. Let's not go rushing into things. So really importantly, before we consider updating to that game engine bearing in mind that game engine is specifically to support the 2024 rule set um, you do not need to update to the point to the 4.0 in order to access and play that for that um, 2024 rule set we need to consider a few things before we make that decision to upgrade if you upgrade to the D&D engine 4.0, you are going to lose pretty much every single mod at time of this video. Because they haven't done them yet. There are a couple that have done them already and are ahead of the game. I know Vision 5e is one of them. But if you're using any automation, any of the MIDI suite, Chris's pre-mades, MIDI QOL, DAE, um, Gambits, any of those... Do not update because you'll be left with nothing. And that's a standard rule for any of these releases, whether it's a found release, whether it's a game engine release, is don't do it. Don't go first because you will put yourself in a world of pain, especially if you've got an ongoing game. I have Curse of Strahd running at the moment, so there is no way I'm updating my game engine mid-flow because it is going to wreck stuff. So how do we know when is the right time to do that? So in this video, I'm going to take you through how you can install a second version of Foundry. You do not need a second license, okay, because it's the same license. You can only have one running at a time. But a second version of Foundry on your machine that you can update to the latest version and you can play with and you can have a look at the shinies because let's face it we all want to look at the shiny new stuff uh, and we can do that but we can do it safely without wrecking our stable platform now again our stable platform is the dnd 3.3.1 in version 12 so i happen to be on version 12 build 331 at the moment which is the latest build um, here's my D&D one and here's my game world, the current ones that I'm using. Like, yes, my Stormwreck Isle that we upgraded from version 11, Curse of Strahd, which is on running, etc. I don't want to fiddle with any of these because this is what I'm using for making sure that my running games like Curse of Strahd are actually working the way I want with all of my other bits. I'm not going to touch this. So get out of there. I don't want to do that. So how can we make sure that we have a safe place to play with this stuff by running another version of Foundry on our same machine. All right, so the first thing you will need to do is we need to run it using the Node.js launcher. So if you go to nodejs.org, uh, you want to go to this downloads tab and the easiest way to do it is the pre-built installer. Now there are a number of versions, current, etc. The uh, choose the LTS. Okay, so that's the the most stable version of it. You want the most up-to-date one of those, and of course you can choose your operating system. You're going to download that, and you're going to install it anywhere you like on your machine. That is, it's not relevant where you where you install that for this purpose. Right, that's cool. You're then going to go to your Foundry page where you are going to look at this bit at the top here and you're going to choose your Foundry version. Now, makes sense. Do the recommended release, the latest stable build release of Foundry. Now, if you were looking at when version 13 comes out and you wanted to play with that, you're going to pick that version of Foundry. But we're not looking at the Foundry version. We're looking at the game engine version for this. So I'm going to do that latest one. And for this operating system, it says Windows, Mac OS, or the Linux J, uh, node js version we're using node js so you want that option there you're going to click that and you're going to download it obviously and now that might take a little while 
What's going to probably take even longer is that's going to download a zip file for you. You want to extract those zip files uh, and you want to stick them in a folder. So while that's downloading, what you need to do is wherever you want to put this second installation of Foundry, create yourself a folder. I've called mine Foundry VTT D&D 4 test. So I know exactly what this is for. Inside that folder, I'm going to create two folders, one called code, one called data. That's all I need to do for this bit. Once that node, uh, once that foundry version has finished downloading and you've unzipped it, you're going to have a whole bunch of files and a couple of folders. You're going to make sure all of those files and folders are in this code folder. So within your new foundry d d 4 test, whatever it is you want to call it, code and data, you drop everything into that code folder. So you should have these resources, uh, locales, and all of these type of files should be in there. You're then kind of ready to go because you've now effectively got Foundry installed, a second version of it. Um, but how do we run this? So if you're on a PC, the easiest way to do that is in this in this folder here. OK, you're going to click in this top bar so you can see up there. I'm going to zoom in on the edit where it's gone. Oh, I'm in E Foundry VTT. I'm in there. I'm just going to type C M D. And what that's going to do is that's going to run the command prompt for Windows. Uh, and as you can see, it's run that command prompt and started me off in the correct folder. Brilliant. That's what I want to do. So now I'm going to tell it to run Foundry, this version of it. So what we're going to put in here, we are going to say node space. Uh, we want to go into that code folder. So we're going to type the word code slash. It's in the resources folder. So resources uh, slash app uh, slash main.js because that's the file we actually want to run and now we need to give it a couple of arguments uh, they're called arguments not because you're going to have a fight with them but it tells it how to run that main.js so we want to do minus and minus and we want to put in a port number and we're going to use port 30,001 now, your normal foundry will use port 30,000 by default. And if you've not changed it, it will use 30,000. We want this to be a different port. 30,001 is just fine. We're going to leave a space. We now need to tell it where the data is. So we're going to do minus minus again. And we're going to write data path. Now, make sure you've got a capital on that word path or it will confuse it. Uh, and we were telling it to look in the data folder. So all this says is, hey, look, we're going to run a we're going to run, run a Node.js. You're going to find it in the code folder, in the resources folder, in the app folder, and it's called main.js. You're going to run that because it's basically going to run a server for us, and you're going to use port thirty thousand one. And when you go looking for your data, look in this data folder here. That's what we're telling it to do. Now, if we press enter here, hopefully everything will go swimmingly. You should see something like this. If I just up that. So there's our original, uh, what we typed in. And it's now telling us we're now running this, running on Node.js. Okay, and get all of this kind of stuff. If you'll look something like this, you have done the correct thing. That's what we should kind of have it looking like. So in our browser, in our address bar at the top, we're going to type in localhost, all one word, colon, and then that port number 30,001. Now, if you look at mine, it says 30,000, but that's because I've already been in and out a couple of times. But as you can see, Foundry immediately now is asking for my license key. So the fact that I've already got Foundry installed and running, this is clearly a different version of Foundry because this one doesn't have the license key attached. But this is easy. 
I'm not going to show you mine, of course, but where we just downloaded that version of Foundry, it says purchase software licenses. And at the bottom here, under this blurry bit that you can't see, is my license key. On the right hand side, there's a little copy. I can click that and I can paste it in here. I know you can't see it because I've made it blurry for a very good reason. I can now submit key. This has now given me access to my, ver my second copy of Foundry. I need to again agree to the license terms. So let's do that. And that brings me into a brand new version of Foundry completely untouched. Uh, you can read that and decide what you want to do, but no game worlds, I can't even click on it. There's no add-ons. I don't even have a game system. So this is exactly what we want. It's completely fresh, it's completely clean. So I'm gonna to go to install and I'm gonna look for D&D and I'm gonna say, oh, look, D&D 5th edition. And it says here version 4.0.0. That's what I'm after for this install. Okay, so let's click that. It's going to take a moment, of course. It's downloading all of that game engine stuff. And it's getting this version of Foundry set up for that game engine. So my original copy of Foundry that we'll go back and look at in a minute just to prove the point that it works and that I've not destroyed my entire life. <laughs> uh, and that's finished in the background. We can see we've got the game engine 4.0.0 on this version. No add-ons um, and no game worlds. I can create a brand new game world. So I can call it playing worth playing with 4.0 or whatever I want and I can select that game engine. Uh, I'm not going to worry about anything else. Create this world. It's a brand new shiny world. Uh, I haven't got passwords or anything on any of this. I've got my welcome to Foundry because it's the first time I've run Foundry. And here we are. This is the fourth edition. Now, obviously, the Foundry version is exactly the same. It's only the game engine that's changed. So we get a chance to have a look at some of the new stuff. And we're not going to spend ages looking at that right now um, because that's for future videos to look at. Um, and to try and test stuff. But you can see we can come in, we've got our character sheets and everything else. So if you wanted to start experimenting, you can do that safely, come in and have a play. You might decide, oh, I'm going to create a couple of scenes, create some combat, run through it, etc., just to see where everything is and see how that's working. But of course, for most people, if we have not got our add-ons um, ready to work, the ones that we want, then what's the point? <laughs> For a lot of people, that's how that's how they'll feel about it. It's how I feel about it. Um, I don't want to be trying to play without some of those basic things, without monks active tile triggers and things like that. Um, and if we look at things like monks active tile triggers, yes, absolutely, I can install it because it's for the right version of Foundry, but don't expect it to work correctly actually within my game world. In fact, it may not even allow me to install it. Let's find out. Experimenting. Because there's a good chance if I go to manage modules and I say, oh, it's going to, it's, it reckons it's going to because it's compatible with Foundry um, and it has agreed. But I might find there's all sorts of issues. It doesn't quite work because that game engine is not quite the same. It's not going to interact in the way that I want to. Now it could be that Monk's Active Tile Triggers, because of what it does and it works on the Foundry level, it's not a big issue. But definitely MIDI's not going to work, Chris's is not going to work, Builder Bonus is not going to work. All of those things that interact directly with the game engine mechanics, they are not going to work. So if you do want to go and play, that's the process. That's how you can set up your second version of Foundry. You can go and play. I can play in this version as much as I like, knowing that I'm not actually going to destroy my original uh, my original world. Um, and just to prove that point, I've just clicked to open that in the background and hopefully 
it's going to allow me to open a second version of Foundry at the same time. It's getting there. It's probably complaining a bit about it. It might get confused because I've got effectively two running. So I'm just going to switch those two over. We've seen this one. This one is fine. I can come in and play with that. This one here. But I can log out of that. I can stop running this. If I close this, it's effectively going to drop the server from running. And then I should be able to just open my normal version of Foundry with my password that I've mistyped. Woo! <laughs> Brown trouser time. Uh, and there we go. This is my normal world on my normal D&D 3.3.1. So I can flick between the two whenever I like. Um, it's not going to interfere with my current build and my stable build, but I can still go and play. So for a lot of you, if you're keen to jump to the version 4, I would say do not do that. Go and have a play. Go and replicate some of the things you want to do uh, and wait until they are working in that 4.0 version before you jump. Now, for me personally, because I'm waiting for MIDI QOL and, um, and Chris's and everything else, I'm expecting it to be months before I update my actual playing game worlds to that 4.0. So, yeah, I'm in no hurry. I don't need to. It works. It's stable. I've got no dramas with it. Why risk the stability of my game by jumping early? So I hope that's useful for those of you who want to uh, want to go and have a play and you're excited, but you're also concerned about that. Just don't update your real game world. Just go and play in basically in a sandbox. Um, and that way you won't get into too much trouble. I hope that's been useful. Take care, everybody. See you soon.